see you back in the URM from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. I have been listening to Big Finish, uh, 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 and I'm actually quite happy I listened to Big Finish. Finally, finally, like I, I got a recommend for you, like actually a real genuine recommend. Uh, Dalek Universe Three. Now I haven't been overly happy with this uh, with this range as yet. Uh, uh, I've been quite actually getting increasingly pissed off with it. Uh, but this one is a good one. This one is totally, totally. Uh, uh, Two out of the three parts are really freaking awesome. I mean, like the uh, some of the all time best David Tennant stuff. Um, I will probably be re, re, re listening to it, which is uh, uh, high praise indeed. Fine, before we get to the review of it, I, I, I'll be sorry, I can let you know why I think this is a good one. Uh, can you hit the like button? That'll be very, very nice. Thank you very much. Can you hit the share button? Uh, people should know what I, what I think about Doctor Who. I, I don't see uh, how their lives can be complete without it. Like, share, subscribe, hit the subscribe button. That'll be fat, that'll be double dozy. I am pathetically grateful for everybody who hits the subscribe button. I'm actually kind of grateful for you just watching, quite frankly. Exactly, really? Wait, you ought to be civilized. Nice. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're subscribed, please make sure you're still subscribed. Okay, let's have a look. Open this up. Firstly, like all this, uh, all of this series, Dark Universe series, fantastic cover. Absolutely fantastic cover. Uh, and one thing, one good thing that this box set does that the previous two do not is deliver on the promise of the cover. We finally have Daleks in, in Dalek Universe, which has annoyed me no freaking end. This is the third and final box set. Uh, so there's episodes uh, uh, seven, eight, and nine, right, of, you know, of this season. Uh, and uh, uh, it's the first time we're actually getting... It was actually the second story. It's the first time we, we, we actually get Daleks in it. Uh, actually get a genuine Dalek story. They are played a little bit as a heavy and a second fiddle to Davros, uh, which uh, has been unusual. But uh, it's a genuine da Dalek story. So, and it's a good one too, right? It's actually a genuinely good story. I think, don't think you need to listen to the other two box sets to enjoy this one. Really, I, I, I really don't. Uh, but, you know, as li listening to this, I was struck by... This this intense tragedy, right, of what, what should have been, what could have been and what should have been. So this set, what makes this one different is we're in very, uh, we're now we're in 80s Doctor Who's Dalek, right? We're Daleks. We're very much into uh, 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 Destiny, Revelation, you know, uh, uh, you know, era type Dalek, Davros being front and center, and has that real f vibe to it. And it's really good. Again, if you like it, you know, like all that stuff, Resurrection, is it? Did I say Resurrection or Revelation? Resurrection of the Dalek. It's got that real vibe to it, right? And it, it, it works nicely. You, you feel that it's Daleks from that era. So then I realized, you know what they should have done? Oh, and it, it hurts me saying it, right? Because it's so freaking obvious. They should have actually delivered on the promise of the covers and on the title, Dalek, Dalek Universe. Wouldn't that be uh, wouldn't it great to have some Daleks and Dalek Universe? And have the first box set, very, very uh, 60s Daleks, right? You know, very, uh, TV 21, that sort of thing. Have those, it goes kind of cool Dalek. The things we saw in uh, a lot, in Dalek Empire, uh, you know, Varga parts, all that stuff. Second box set, make it very 70s Daleks. Have Ogrons, have you know, the gold Dalek, you know, have that have that sort of thing going on. Uh, 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 and then this one will be 80s Daleks. Would have been epic beyond epic beyond epic. But uh, again, um, they weren't really interested in putting Daleks in, which just, you know, again, is such a bait and switch. Calling it Dalek Universe and getting to box set three without having a Dalek story um is is an absolute disgrace it's uh the closest they came is in box set two they had a story with obviously fake daleks that were designed by earth forces if they wanted to call it special space security service the sss or whatever they, they, they're fine because that's what it was right now finally uh it's it, it's got daleks and they've actually got time jump so there's no ss uh what was it special space service anymore it's sss right it's not the, the, so um uh, so I, I just don't understand, I don't understand how they missed it. Well, in the first box set, they were very excited about introducing uh, um, what's saying Gemma Whelan to be a female version of the meddling monk, and she's terrible in it. Right? It's all I mean, that's really the central part of that first box set. Uh, you know, they could have cut that out and maybe put some Daleks in. I know, wouldn't that have been again like they kept promising on the like they sold it? You know, I it just it's so. It's so dishonest. <laughs> really, I think it's really like that. You know, it's so dishonest. Um, 
you know, it, uh, uh, and then the second book said again, you know, we, we had the, the fake Daleks, and it's like this. It didn't sound like Daleks. They weren't supposed to. Uh, actually, they do this in, in this box. as well. They make that mistake in this box as well. Whenever you have characters pretending to do something in the plot, they over-pretend. So it's very clear that they're like, I can tell, for God's sake. So this box set starts off um, the Doctor and uh, uh, Anya Kingdom, Jane Slaven, freaking excellent. She's, she's been a great companion to him throughout the, the whole thing. I kind of uh, thought that it was going to this was going to go into a cliffhanger and lead into another uh, series, but sadly not, right? Sadly not. But she's uh, uh, she's been so they 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 arrive there in the middle of a uh, Dalek Mavellum battle, and a Dalek uh, uh, Dalek ship turns around and hails them and says in Dalek voice, "Hello, sweetie." So, uh, and then we have uh, the first book. The first story is all about uh, River Song as a uh Mavellan. and and essentially i think it was matt fitton uh the box uh, the, the 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 script editor on you know on this series um said, i said oh, we've got a great idea river shong turns turns up in the beaded Mavellan uh, and uh a wig and she's a Mavellan. uh and they gave it to lizzie hopefully to write a, a story around now i was um uh my initial thought on this story was was uh a lot harsher uh, then, 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 and uh, then subsequently, and I was won over by uh, the the was it the extras at the end, the the interviews at the end. When uh, yeah, my my initial thought was, well, this is a below par story. It's got a female author. Uh, I know Big Finish are very very intent on having uh, a disproportionately high number of female authors. Why? What, what do I mean by disproportionately high? I mean if you if the the viewership or the listenership is 30% female then the and you and you recruit 80% of your uh, uh writers from that 30%. The only way to do that is to have the quality drop and we have seen uh the quality drop uh, remarkably with big finish quite a lot. So much so that I'm just not buying as much anymore. And so far I've been proved right on oh, everyone like you know the uh, I I said oh, I bet there's no six doctor in that 11 set. Uh, in, I bet he's missing from like the middle episode, and it's, it's going to be exactly the same as the Eric Roberts Mars set. I was proved a hundred percent right. I said I bet that Eleven Doctor Chronicles is just going to be garbage because I see all the writers and none of them seem very good. Uh, and I was exactly right, right? So uh, um, what can I tell you, Big Finish? You know, I I I hope uh, uh, I hope you. Uh, uh, pull out this insanity. So I need. So I, I initially put down the this episode being the weakest one to uh, Lizzie Hopley being a diversity hire. She talked me out of that in the in the interviews afterwards and basically said, "Listen, they came up with a laundry list of stuff and they asked me to put it together and I didn't have much time because they were recording all these dur during lockdown. So the reason she got this job is because she wrote another another story." Uh, with the Tenth Docks and River Song, which I remember being actually pretty darn good. Which one is it? Uh, Precious Annihilation. Uh, which one? But, uh, she wrote one the Eleven as well. But I, uh, this was the strongest one. Mutually Assault Destruction. This was the strongest one of the Time Lord Victorious, nearly. Uh, but because all the all the plot elements were given to her by I can't remember. But anyway. Uh, Precious Annihilation. This was actually a pretty darn good story, right? In hindsight, this was actually a pretty darn good story. And on the strength of this one, she got she got hired for this. Uh, and she again, she was given a laundry list of stuff, and, and it just didn't reach really out. The the basic problem is, is that River Song song is there to point the the plot in a particular direction, uh, and, and it, it there's a hundred different ways of doing that. She just feels very very uh, superfluous and. and there's a mystery about her which is rather than interesting is just somewhat annoying, right? And it, it didn't really work, and it's kind of fudged. Um, fine, let's read the uh, uh, the blurb. The doctor attempts to return home have led him to the middle of a war zone, a familiar and a familiar voice. Where it, well, not a voice; it was the Dalek voice saying, "Hello, sweetie." The travelers arrive on the planet made up of crashed spaceships. That was really good. Okay, that that was like really, this planet they're on is uh, a bunch of spaceships have like crashed and impacted upon each other and created gravity. Uh, uh, so yeah, that was a very good uh, good touch um, where they encounter River Song or do they? Uh, because she's dressed as a Mavella and claims to be a member of the robot race. Is she undercover, a duplicate, or something more sinister? And more importantly, 
who is a son. Um, yeah, there's pretty much that's a fair that, that's a fair description of the story. A again, it just feels that she was shoehorned in, and, and it's not intrinsic to the part. Um, so I, I, forgettable, right? For, it, it, it was like a throwaway one for me. But uh, uh, finally, the Dalek defense and the triumph of Davros. This is Matt Fitton uh, pulling everything together and, and delivering on something, and it's actually really, really good. So, the Doctor and Anya are trapped between uh, battling Dal Dalek and the, Vel the Velen forces. Only intervention of Earth can get, get him out of trouble. Get him out of trouble. But the humans have trouble too. A uh, very, uh, very familiar prisoner, Davros. So, I'm not sure when this is set. Is this set after... Um, Destiny of the Daleks, but before Resurrection, uh, uh, or is it set after Resurrection when it was, it was frozen again? I think this will set before re uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. I think, I think. Um, but yeah, look, Terry Malloy is freaking incredible in this. He, he just knocks it out of the park. He, he's, he's, uh, his performance is dripping with intelligence. Uh, uh, and insane megalomania. He's really good. I mean, it's one of the best Davros appearance I've ever seen. And him sparking off uh, David Tennant knocks it out the park. Just absolutely fantastic. Back in the universe before the time where the Doctor is bound by rules of his own past, but can he keep every, uh, everyone alive without changing history? And uh, would he even want? Uh, would, would he even want to? Yeah, of course he would want to. And then the second part of it is returning to a familiar planet. I think I can spoil this without giving away. The, the, everything ends on Kemble, which I really liked. Okay, it, that was a good, uh, a, a good. Uh, I mean, a post-apocalyptic Kemble after the Time Destructor has uh, ripped it. So you got uh, uh, Anya Kingdom in the same place that Sarah Kingdom was. It, it is. It, it's an important thing for the for the characters. Um, uh, Mavellum and, and Dalek warships uh, floating in the sky above. The stakes for the time travel have never been higher. Yes, finally you're delivering. Finally you're delivering the promise, right? Uh, the mistakes of the Doctor Pass are going back to haunt him. Alliances are made and broken. Uh, and of course, the war is about to turn. The Doctor can't stop what's coming, but maybe, just maybe, he's able to save his friends. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but what this really is, is a, a plot and counterplot between Davros and the Doctor and the Mavellans, and also the, the, uh, uh, the Daleks. Um, it, and there's one more factor which I don't want to spoil, but you get to see the history of the Mavellans, where they came from. So this is um, the second Mavellan history I can think of. Uh, the first one was in War of the Daleks, a book uh, by Jonathan Peel from the 90s or maybe early 2000s. Uh, it was one of the early Eighth Doctor novels. And the idea was that uh, the Mavellans were created by the, the Daleks as a decoy race to get the Doctor to blow up Scaro, uh, blow up a fake Scaro, not the real one, in Resurrection of the Daleks. Not resurrection, remembrance of the Daleks. Okay, now so that was a bit naff. Uh, uh, I think it's been wiped away from Canada. So now there's a whole new, different origin uh, which ties very much into this series. Um, sadly, I can't recommend the other two box sets at all. I, I really can't. The the uh, uh, these two stories finishing it fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, the uh, what was it the uh, the first son? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. So yeah. Uh, definitely worth uh, uh, um, definitely worth a listen, right? This this is a strong one. I'm happy to 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 recommend it. Um, I it's a shame they really could have done more with David Tennant and Jane Slavin. It really just a really great combination, uh, and, and it does kind of end on a promise of more. So maybe there will be more. Uh, but the promise of more does not include David Tennant. They they. Again, they didn't know lockdown. They thought lockdown would be over pretty darn soon. So you know he's a busy actor. They might not be able to get them again. But yeah, it's been nice. It's been nice hearing him even so. If only the rest of this freaking uh, series had been as good as this one, I I would have been. This would have been the an all time classic for Big Finish. Uh, that um, really I think would have put it in very very good stead in in going going into the future. As it stands, this is a, a big finish. <laughs> but, you know, limping in, limping in after a pretty turgid race. My name is Vila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Do you disagree with me about Dalek Universe? Do you think it was great? I just, for me, if they just had not called it Dalek Universe, 
That would have made life so much better, right? That would have made, that means they weren't lying to me when they didn't deliver Daleks. It, it, they delivered the universe, but universe is easy. We want the Dalek bit, right? And when, man, when they show up, it's so good. It's so good. My name's Ethan Bacon, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!